The man who watched me for two hours in an abandoned building. I'm a young girl in my late teens, and I grew up in a pretty small city, which gets even smaller when the Queen's students leave for the summertime. Ontario is home to Queen's University, which means that I'm not typically alone at night when I go out to my late night endeavors. However, once those students are gone for the summer, I tend to find myself in riskier situations with rougher looking people. It's almost as if when the students leave, the crazies come back. I'm a huge advocate of exploration, and I explore every single chance I get. This hobby of mine has gotten me in trouble more than a few times, and I'm honestly lucky to still remain unscathed by any insane person to this day. There are quite a few abandoned buildings in my city, which nearly anyone who is interested in horror and adventure would love to find their way inside of. I have an eye for details, and I'm only around 5'1 and 116 pounds, so that makes me the perfect candidate to escape into the small crevices and holes of an abandoned building. Not too long ago, I found a building I was scoping out for a while. I found my way in with little effort and understood the dangers of going alone. I'm a risk taker, but I'm not stupid, so of course I had someone with me. Now, let's just say I wasn't expecting this person to be as flaky and easily frightened as they were. So, most of the rooms I entered, I had to enter on my own, equipped with a flashlight and bag, in case I found anything super interesting. I explored the dark corners of the building. I didn't expect it to be so huge. I found a journal with writing in it that looked to be a foreign language, and even with my knowledge of different languages, I couldn't decipher what this person was going on about. I also saw multiple mathematical formulas with a type of math I had never seen before, surrounded by odd symbols and drawings. There was also a ton of zodiac signs and talking of the planets and their rotation, which was enough to put me off in itself due to the fact that my own zodiac sign was heavily underlined and rewritten multiple times. Of course, I didn't piece anything together here because it is extremely unlikely anyone would be in the building with me, but I started to feel even more on edge as the night crawled on. I made it a promise to myself to check every room because I didn't crawl into a dark hole for nothing. My friend had opted in staying near the entrance, and I obliged, simply because arguing would lead to noise, and noise led to alerting others of my presence. I continued looking amongst this dark, eerie building, which continued with a thick air that I almost felt I had to sift through, as if it were a thick, visible fog. I'd already seen a bed, clothing, books, stickers, anything you think of, but abandoned buildings commonly house these items. As I'm not unfamiliar with Scotter staying, staying places for a few days and just moving on. However, in all my years of exploration, I never encountered someone who stayed inside a building or approached me in a building that I entered. I started to get deeper into the building. I went down the stairs and walked down a dark, wet hallway. I felt like I had been there for hours and there couldn't be anything else I hadn't already explored as I got further away from not only my friend, but the exit as well. My basic senses started to heighten. I think it may have been due to this that I started to smell a putrid odor near me, one that I hadn't noticed upon initially entering. I was stuck in a hallway with little places to go, so I entered another room, hoping to escape the smell. However, the smell started to turn into footsteps, and I realized the room I was now standing in was barricaded in some way, with mattresses against the walls piled on top of one another, needles around my feet, and children's toys scattered, carelessly. No red flags got off my head when I'm in an abandoned building until I stumble upon children's clothing or children's toys. That's where I always draw the line. I turned around and told myself it was time to leave, but I didn't feel like it was just me that was going to be leaving. I started walking back the way I came, finding my way through the mess and the clutter, the disgusting odors and tapping of feet and plunking of water. I hated it there. I hated this building I explored, and I only had one exit as well. I knew if I made one wrong move, it could lead to something awful, so I did not turn around. At this point, either due to adrenaline or my senses heightening, which I believe to have been connected to my adrenaline kicking in, I could literally feel someone behind me. I heard, smelled, and felt the presence of someone walking no more than six feet behind me. At this point, I picked up my pace, but in a way that wouldn't be too obvious. And when I reached the exit, I cannot explain the euphoria I felt. It was such a relief to see my friend and tell her to get the hell out of here. 
As soon as I started making my way to the hole to exit, I felt a strong grip on my right leg, and my heart literally stopped. Whoever was in this building had clearly been following me and watching me the entire time, but they didn't bother touching me until the second I tried to leave. I didn't even look back. I just started kicking my leg and screaming at this point. I didn't care about people hearing me. My friend quickly caught on and started screaming too, then reached for both of my hands. Whoever had been gripping my leg had gripped me so hard, when I finally broke loose, there were red indents on my calf. We went home and literally did not speak another word about it. Actually, I tried to change the subject in my shivery voice because I was so scared. Whoever this person was would have been following us home as well. Long story, kind of shortened. We weren't followed anymore. And my friend proposed that it may have been someone else exploring or a teenager up to no good that wanted to scare me by following me and grabbing me, so I would assume I was in danger. Personally, I don't believe that. No normal person smells that horrible or has that much time to follow around a girl through an abandoned building. That to my initial inspection have been abandoned for nearly three years. I assume it was safe since there was no sign of anyone for so long. The next morning, there were purple bruises on my leg. I didn't go to the police because it's not a great impression to be entering abandoned buildings in the first place. I don't really know what to make of this experience, but I am so happy I am alive and whoever that was didn't grab me sooner. Always, always, always bring somebody with you when you explore buildings. If it wasn't for my friend grabbing me, I don't know if I would have been able to kick my way out of there. So creepy, silent, child grabbing abandoned building stalker, let's not meet again. Met a seemingly deranged man at an abandoned water refinery. I've been reading this subreddit for a while now, and figured I might as well contribute my own story. Preemptive apology for the over artsy shots, but these weren't meant to be documentations. One of my favorite activities exploring old abandoned buildings. I've seen quite a few strange things during my trips, but one experience still creeps me out to this day. A few years ago, I found a long forgotten water refinery through the help of online exploration communities and Google Earth. Although it's stupid, I always go to places for the first time alone, partly for the thrill and partly because if something bad were to happen, I would feel terrible having brought someone else into that situation, so I make plans to head there the next day after my class is let out. The day of the trip, I pack up my camera and water bottle and set off following my hand-drawn map. After an hour or two of biking, I finally arrive at the place, which luckily had an old bike path dead ending, just past it. It was completely overtaken by vegetation with trees growing up though, and around the building, not to mention that the actual buildings were just disintegrating, with paint peeling off every wall and ceiling. I took my time, scouring each of the buildings, looking around for anything interesting. I found hundreds of broken windows, weird broken spheres, and some kind of giant oven. After an hour or two of successful exploring, I decided to head off happy with an SD card full of pictures. Soon after, I pulled my bike back out through the hole in the fence I entered and started biking away. I remember there was one last shot I wanted to get. I'm pretty insistent on getting the shots I want, and I didn't know if I would ever come back anyways. So I decided to just tough it out, ride back and take the picture. As I was going back, I saw a lone man dressed in old clothes, walking down the bike trail away from the dead end. I thought it was kind of strange path for someone to take a walk on, and something in me said, don't let him see you go in there. I biked past him, and gave him a slight head nod, and figured I'd bike all the way to the end of the trail, turn around, and by the time I got back, he'd be long gone, having continued in the opposite direction. I leisurely take my time to get to the end and turn around, and as I head back towards a hole in the fence, I see him there staring at me and walking back towards a dead end from which he came. He had a happy look on his face, but it wasn't the kind of happiness that made me feel at ease in any way, shape, or form. The best way I could describe it is he looked like he had just been told a very dirty joke and was trying to contain it. I knew I had to do something as I was literally trapped between him and a dead end. I decided to play it cool once more but be ready to drop everything and run if things got hairy. 
as I get closer and closer to him, I can see his facial expression clearer, and it's not someone I want to be in the same state with, let alone with the same bike path. I'm silently cursing myself for going back for one picture as I slowly get closer. Finally, I'm about 20 feet away from him, and he calls out, I sure would like a ride! It's so hot out, mind if I jump on? As soon as I hear this, I realize this is no longer my brain, falsely interpreting something as creepy. I pick up speed and rush past him, putting as much space between us as I can. I now long behind me and see that he's, he's once again turned around and following me. At this point, I bolt, sprinting down the bike path back onto the road. Interestingly, I stop at a nearby gas station on the way home to get a refill on my Gatorade. I see a cop there and told him I just rode down the old bike path by this park. He looked at me, sort of bewildered as to why a person would ride out there, or at least that was what I guessed from behind his sunglasses, and he told me he didn't recommend people going there, especially alone, as some shady characters like to hang out there. I wish I could say I stayed away, but I went back one other time with a girl and had a completely different but almost as creepy experience. It's shorter and not worth a whole post, but I can add it in the comments if anyone wants to hear it. Man emerges from dumpster to chase. This happened about 10 years ago when I was around 16 years old. My parents didn't really care what I did or who I was with. My home life had very little structure. I had five other sisters, so maybe my folks had just given up at that point. Anyways, my then boyfriend, Ian, and I decided to go for a merry stroll at 3 a.m. around my considerably dangerous neighborhood. I was a serious mouth-breathing doofus. There was a particular spot that we really enjoyed visiting often, a little railroad bridge that had a semi-convert way to get to a moderately sized island beneath it, and a raging river surrounding that island. We just jumped down onto a small, semi-circle slab of concrete from the tracks, and then there was a ten or so foot drop down to the island. Usually there was a pallet or some other makeshift ladder to ease your way down, when the river wasn't exceedingly risen. It was probably about a 40 or 50 foot drop all the way down to the river from the bridge that one stood on. We nicknamed the island Jackson's Island from the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So, we set ourselves out to go on this adventure that's about a 15 minute walk from my house. The neighborhood surrounding Jackson's Island did not contain any houses at all. It was just factories and abandoned buildings and was very industrialized. Once we were about five minutes walking distance to the island and on the railroad tracks that led to the bridge, we heard a rustling sound that was coming from a large commercial-sized dumpster that we had recently passed by. It neither bothered nor alarmed either of us, and we credited it to some sort of nocturnal, hungry creature that was scavenging through the garbage for some tasty things to chop on. We gave it no second thought. We continued walking and walked until we crossed the streets to get to the railroad bridge. For some reason that I cannot remember, be it some sort of divine intervention or just paranoia, I turn around after we cross the street. That was when I saw, in the distance, someone climbing out of the dumpster. This was obviously unsettling, and I frantically but quietly pointed it out to Ian. We discussed what we should do. Ian had two ideas. One, we could either cross the railroad bridge or two, flee to Butterworth Street. Now, crossing the bridge was difficult at times for me. There were small gaps in the wooden boards, and when I walked across them, it took me a lengthy amount of time because I always, I, I always had the irrational fear that I was going to fall through into the raging river beneath me. There was really no possible way for this to actually happen without someone pushing me over the edge or something similar to that happening. Also, the other end of the railroad bridge was not only just more industrial buildings, but it also led to an even worse neighborhood area. So, I mentioned to Ian that the street was probably a better idea because it is still a busy street, Butterworth, during the day and if we could make it there, we would probably be greeted with some fellow human beings. We agreed this was the best action to take. We began briskly walking the five or so blocks to Butterworth Street. The man was still far behind us, 
but we didn't concretely believe that he had any real ill intentions. Maybe it was just a coincidence that he emerged out of a dumpster and was balking behind us in the middle of the fucking nowhere at 3 in the morning. Perhaps a man only desired to braid each other's hairs with us and exchange high fives. We were naive as fuck. The next time we turned around, maybe five minutes, he was full on speed charging right at us. He was very close behind us. As I previously said, it was only about a five minute walk from the dumpster area to the beginning of the railroad bridge, and I could see what he looked like now. He was a white man with light blonde hair, average build, was probably in his mid-twenties, and all I can remember of what he was wearing was red sweatpants. We began booking it to Butterworth Street, and he was just right behind us chasing us and alternating between muttering incoherent angry things to himself and squealing like the creepiest of pigs. Somehow we made it to the streets with all of our limbs and organs, and we were still breathing. When I turned around to see where he was, he grinned wildly at me, while staring directly into my eyes. He was within an arm's reach of us now. Suddenly he lunged at me with his arms out like he was trying to catch me, but somehow I jumped out of his way, and Ian and I dodged the car and crossed the street for some reason. He left us alone once we were on the other side of the street, and just muttered angrily and loudly about how he would let us get away like that. I do not know what his intentions were, but I'm so glad that I never... But I never discovered them. Strange Car and Abandoned Fairgrounds This happened to me when I was in middle school, around age 12. My parents were really involved with helping the local area's homeless. And every Thursday night at church, they would get together with a bunch of people and make bag lunches to hand out around town. That meant, every Tuesday, my dad had an agreement with the owner of the local area food bank to go in and get some boxes of food to put into the lunches. I liked to go with him on Tuesday nights, because I sometimes got treats or toys or whatever else was there. For a bit of atmosphere to the story, this food bank was in the creepiest possible place in town, it was by some abandoned railroad tracks, a huge warehouse, but not much else around it, except the abandoned fairgrounds across the streets. At night time, it had an extremely creepy vibe, so, especially in the winter time, I sometimes dreaded going because it got dark so early. One night, my dad was looking through the food bank as usual, and we were getting ready to leave. I held the front door open for him so that he could carry all the stuff out and then he was going to lock the door behind him. Well, as soon as I opened the front door, this car came screeching up out of nowhere. It looked like a cop car, sort of. A round sedan, something like that. Its headlights were off. This car pulls up literally just a few feet in front of me, and my stomach automatically drops. My dad grabs me by the shirt and quite literally throws me back inside, telling me to turn the lights off and lock the door behind me, but I could not. I opened the door a crack, because I was certain that my dad was about to be killed. Three very large men got out of the car and stood directly in front of my dad, just staring at him. At that point, I opened the door further, until I knew they could see me. I could not fathom just watching as something terrible happened. These men regarded me, looked at each other, and got back into the car. They drove away, very slowly, and my dad and I hightailed it out of there. I completely believed that if I hadn't been there that night, my dad would have been robbed, hurt, or killed. Possibly all three. My encounter with Negan at an abandoned hospital. So this just happened about two hours ago. I'm pretty shaken up, but as soon as I got out, the first thing that crossed my mind was to post my encounter to Reddit Let's Not Meet as soon as I got home. So, here I am. To give a little background, I'm a film student in college right now, and me and my buddies are always trying to find new locations to film our movies at. I make horror films, so all the places I'm looking for and exploring are abandoned. And tonight, me and my group of friends, there were 10 of us total, decided to check out this abandoned hospital down the street from our school. They had been there before and said it was a great spot for filming, and I should check it out. Tonight was that night. So, 
When we get there, I have my Nikon DSLR out with a handheld LED light attached to the top of the camera to scout the place when we get inside. I didn't film any of the encounter because I usually only film the inside of these places, but I had my camera and light out to shine the way through. I was leading the way down this narrow path that led to these walls that we had to climb to get onto the roof of the place when we would access one of the rooms to get inside of the building. Because I was carrying my camera and bag, I was trying to look for another way up. So I walk a little further down this narrow path and I start noticing a lot of clothes and random shoes and cardboard boxes lying around the area. There was even an empty sleeping bag. That's when I knew we were probably not alone and were likely going to run into someone if we made the wrong move and boy did we ever. One of my friends walking behind me down this path notices a door to my right. It's closed and my guess was that it was locked and not worth trying. But he already had his hand on the door handle and starts tugging. I look over and it barely cracks open, but something is holding it from the inside. I shine my LED on the inside and I see a shirt tied to the inside door handle to another part of the room acting as a lock. But my friend being the way he is tugs again and rips that shirt right off and the door swings open. Inside, there is someone sleeping on like a table or a couch alongside with a group of terrifying looking people sitting by a light inside that room and they all stop and stare at us. In the short glimpse that I got, my friend yells, Oh shit, get the fuck out of here! Slams the door and just bolts past me. I was standing there a little shaken, almost feeling like I should apologize, but I just followed him instead. My other eight friends are already on the roof at this point, ask what's going on, and we just ran for our lives out of the area. I hear the door and the path swing open, but I couldn't look back. From there, me and my friend rendezvous back to a higher part of the area, away from any entrance leading to the hospital. There's a small gap that you could jump across to get to one of the roofs of the building that my other friends were on. About four of them follow us and jump across, ready to get out of there. But the others stay on the roof and watch us, stuck like statues. I look at them, confused, as what they're staring at, and I begin to hear this metal dragging on the concrete. I turn around, and then there is a crazy looking man, maybe mid-twenties, dragging a baseball bat with nails all along the end, walking towards us as he drags the bat along the concretes. Acting like Negan from The Walking Dead, my heart sinks. At this point, I turn off my lights, and that's shining in the moonlight. I keep my hand on my pocket knife, desperately trying to think of anything to do if he starts swinging, but I knew there was no way I would come out alive if I tried anything. Plus, I gotta take care of my camera. So he walks closer to us, and the first thing he says is, you're gonna want to keep that light off, and everyone is silent. I am practically shaking at this point. He then starts circling around us as he says, You guys are never gonna fucking come back, right? He walks past me and sees the camera and raises his bat, saying, And you're gonna put the fucking camera away. And I just barely say, Yeah, it's, it's off. He looks over my friends watching on the roof, past the gap, and he points to them, and he says, Jump. And they stand silent. The guy says again, fucking jump across right now, just run and jump, you'll make it. Keep in mind, the gap doesn't look that bad, but the drop is fatal if you don't make the fall, and my four friends are all staring down at the drop, fearing what could happen. One of them says, I don't think I can make it, and the Negan guy replies, run and jump, or else you're going to regret it. So my friend steps back, runs, and barely makes the jump. From there, one by one. The other three jump across, all while the Negan guy is standing right behind us with his bat, dragging along the concrete. Once we all got across, he says to us, You're never coming back here again, you understand. And we awkwardly apologize and run back away to our cars in the distance. I get in my car and look back at the area, and he's still standing there watching us with his bat as we sped off. Realistically, we probably could have ganged up on him as a group if anything bad happened, but who knows who else was back there? Sadly, the hospital is a no-go from there on out. But I still be looking around for some sick locations. What scared me the most about this was how fearless and disturbed this guy looked. He's definitely seen some shit and undoubtedly used that bat before on someone else. He looked like a killer. He was a killer. And it was his calmness that really got to me. Definitely a lesson, a lesson learned. But regardless, let's not meet again. Negan guy. Edit. I just woke up for an 8am class, 
and I'm and I'm gonna call the cops as soon as I'm out. Thanks for the advice, guys. Our first thought was wasn't to call the cops because none of us were supposed to be there, especially that late at night. But still, I'll contact them.